Welcome back, everyone, to the what should be Tortuga's final episode in Rule the Waves, the Succession series, playing with the Historical Gamer, the x G, and myself, again, Tortuga Power. So yeah, we should be able to get to January 1912, no problem, by the end of this video. And for those people who may need a refresher, or people jumping in from XTRG's channel who uh, just... I mean, I highly recommend you start the series over from the very beginning, but if you, for some reason, don't want to do that, at least I'll be including a summary at the end of this video, so you can just kind of be caught up on all the events that have happened uh, so far. So, the first order of business will be to scrap these Gaidons, and also to put this ship, the Charles Martel, on reserve fleet as soon as we get her into the Mediterranean. So that should only take one month. Oh man, so the liberal government wants to reduce arm expenditures. What is my reaction? Well, we want, actually, we're kind of happy to have tensions up because tensions are controlled by, gosh darn it, I keep forgetting. I gotta put this intel up. And I also wanna switch up our research because I left this on uh, not exactly my standard configuration in order to get the Devastation class out in a manner which I liked. Now, Torpedo Protection 2, I feel like, is the almost the best thing damage control has to offer. Because Torpedo Protection 3, I mean, it's better, obviously, but it's really expensive to put on your ships. Like, it requires a massive amount of tonnage. So there's a huge jump from 2 to 3. The jump from 3 to 4 is really small, so if you're going to get 3, you might as well get 4, but... Um, we might as well just sit on damage control for a little bit uh, and wait for Torpedo Protection 3 to be something easier to research. So we'll just put that to low. Hopefully we can get some, something like, oh, maybe all or nothing armor. That would be great. We'll put this up to high, though. This will go to medium. This will go back to medium. Torpedo Technology about to enter into its own, the Great Equalizer. And medium for this. I think that that is what we want. Okay, good. So we have those things set back. This guy can go to reserve fleet. And you're in West Africa, so we can actually scrap. Oh, there's one in the Mediterranean. I can scrap that guy as well. Goodbye to the Gidon class. Should only be one more month, and then the rest of them will arrive. Okay, Indian Ocean now. Oh, God, I never sent him. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Well, at least next turn, we'll be able to scrap both of the ones in Southeast Asia. So. Okay, the new British ship. Ooh, wow. Ah. <clears throat> so this is comparable to our Devastation class. 26,000. It's lighter. Faster. Comparably armored. Their belt is higher. Our turret is half an inch higher. Our conning tower is higher. Now, 10 14 inch guns. <laughs> Compare that with our 12 15. No, 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 10 15 inch guns. Yeah, I would definitely give our ship the advantage there. Okay, so now Southeast Asia, the Deputy Tois have arrived, so we can scrap these. And just that one in the Indian Ocean will wait one more turn before we get her as well. Now you may think that this is going to be a budget, like it's going to be, the budget will be in a terrible situation when we pass it on to X tier G, but that won't be the case because um, when the Devastation class finish, it should only be like at 40 million funds left over at the time budget, the balance makes turnover back to the positive. So we'll leave him with a positive balance and, you know, about 50 million funds, which should be sufficient for him to design his own class, even if he wants. But I do plan on getting out of Battlecruiser before uh, the end of my tenure, and we'll look for that around June. If we get really lucky, maybe we'll get a jump in gun designs. Okay... How much longer? Let me see what difference this makes. Okay, so now we're at this weird state where the, the turnover for accelerated and not accelerated is identical. <laughs> so we might as well pay. 
Okay, I'm gonna ex leave it accelerated for one more month, but then we'll turn it off accelerated, and that shouldn't make, shouldn't have any impact. It's a little bit sneaky. Okay, let's do this. This is the new British battle cruiser in the New Zealand. So six 15-inch broadside. That's significant. Wow, six-inch belt. That's really low. That's quite low. Okay, well, we always want to try to do this in a way which maximizes tension, and if it happens to increase prestige, 46 prestige is already more than I think I need, but the tension is good. Um, did I already... This last Gidon can be scrapped. So goodbye to the Gidon class. Oh, sorry, that's not the one I want. It was always an eyesore. I, I don't understand why you would have three different gun calibers that are all so close, just so very close. I just don't understand this ship at all. So she will not be missed. Although I, I still respect the people who served, I don't respect the people who designed her, <laughs> which is legacy, not not this historical gamer. And good, our, our unrest is actually falling slowly, which is nice to see as well. Um, yeah, we'll sell the Japanese. Yeah, money's money. We don't really care about the Japanese anyways. I think we'll be able to... The tough thing with fighting the Japanese is just getting your fleet over to Northeast Asia, but usually their fleet, if you can get a fleet there, is no match for whatever you get over there. All right, just a month or maybe two more, and then we get to the battle cruiser. Actually, I need to refit the... Diamond class, because the minesweepers, when they get old, they will just scrap themselves. So we aren't we aren't gonna do anything special with this. Just redesign it exactly the same way it was already designed. It's already a great design. So just put fresh coat of paint on the outside, and then they'll all be ready to go. Three and a half inches of belt armor is pretty sizable for a light cruiser. What the hell is this? One and a half belt, 21 knots. This is a new ship. All right, the main German battle cruisers are 12 inch main guns. That's good to see. So if we build a battle cruiser with 13 or more, we will have the superior ship. And okay, why? I don't understand why. Why is why zero? That should have been last month. Hmm. Oh, well, this is bad. <laughs> During trials, it is found that the ship is somewhat overweight. <clears throat> I don't know what bearing that had. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's hilarious. <laughs> <clears throat> wow. The people watching the stream are gonna get a kick out of this. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> oh yeah, 15 inch guns. <laughs> Wait, I mean, that's really good because I wanna design, I wanna redesign the Devastation class. Um, when you refit, retrofit your ships, when they have these trial errors, so um, the Devastation has this uh, design trial, whatever thing that makes it overweight. When you retrofit it, that will go away. You have to wait for all the ships of that same class to finish. So in some ways, it's actually important for us to make sure these guys make it out on time. I'm just going to accelerate. This also leaves them susceptible to events. <clears throat> You're not seeing them because I often speed by, but there's often these events where it'll say a ship has been delayed or a ship has been sped up through random events. <clears throat> Accelerating it increases the chances of those positive events. But, yes, okay. So, here's the Minesweepers finishing. Yeah, I guess we have 30 of these, huh? <laughs> Do 
Oh, very good. So we want double torpedo tube mounts because that's when... It, oh, wow. 11-inch gun is quality zero as well. Wow. Impressive. Very impressive. I really hate the fact that that happened because uh, I had to re-record this, uh, the stream saw, and I didn't have 15-inch guns, and I even said, no, nah, there's no way we're going to get uh, better guns, but, and then we did, and I was sure that my battle cruiser was going to be based on 13-inch guns, but it would be like a crime for me to do that now. Maybe what I'll do instead is just design the destroyer if we can get double t torpedo mounts, and then I'll just leave it up to XTRG. He can design whatever battle cruiser he'd like. Now, we're, we are very behind on the Battlecruiser race, <clears throat> unfortunately. So we need to get started on this quickly. Because I killed off our armored cruisers, which were way down in numbers, just so we can start getting more Battlecruisers. But, very unfortunate. Yeah. Hmm. Um... <clears throat> I, I, huh, I honestly don't know what to do now. Okay, weight savings on hole and double torpedo mounts. Very good. Excuse me real fast. <clears throat> okay, the Germans have stole something from us. We'll just increase tensions. Which uh, does help with your budget. <clears throat> Okay, so what else do we have? Ah, uh, so interesting that that 15-inch gun came up. It, it does change the entire dynamics of the series, too. Like, France is just going to become 15-inch guns everywhere. <laughs> As they should, if they got such a great breakthrough. But... Well, let's just experiment with it and see what we would be getting ourselves into. There, that's better. Hmm. We have four and a half million negative right now, and 72 million in the bank. Oh, well, if we had all or nothing armor, it would make this like a no-brainer decision. Wow, I just, I, uh, I feel dirty. So what if we decide to design this actually to be a top of the line battle cruiser? I still think the lower belt <clears throat> is fine and we can sacrifice that for a higher deck. What does this look like? Okay, how far away are we? We actually could get this off. We're up to 3.7. 3.8. Uh, hmm. But this would be like the undisputed queen of the seas almost indefinitely. And I think we might as well go and use our superimposed. How much would it be to make this design my like special tweak? Whew. Now we're up to four million. Is it worth it? Let's ask ourselves. The increase in the total broadside goes up from eight to nine. The increase in cost goes up by about that much, actually. Hmm. I really don't know. I really can't say if it's worth it to get that increased gun in the front. <clears throat> Most of the time, the ship will probably be pursuing or using the front. So that gun will be effective almost all the time. There's very rarely going to be a situation where we're retreating and we won't be firing with the front gun. The question is, if we're firing a broadside, then that difference is much less significant than if we're only firing our five or four forward guns, depending on whether or not we choose the triple or double turret configuration. I was talking about this a little bit in the stream that I think it's kind of nice to do a weird, quirky design just for the sake of being weird and quirky. I 
people will forever wonder why this lopsided, asymmetric, unbalanced design was, uh, was finalized. <laughs> okay, so we're at the displacement max. We can't go above 34. We could lower this down to 9. 3, 3, 3. I mean, this is a really solid design. I, I, I really, really, really like it. We don't even have to drop the turret down, right? No, I probably want more than just 100 rounds. And then we might as well, can we squeeze in? Oh, wow. I really like this design. <laughs> and we have 30 tons remaining, which will be uh, just perfect for when new fire control becomes available. And when new fire control becomes available, we can even drop down the rounds per gun if we need to, because um, 110 rounds for 15 inch guns is actually quite a lot. You'd probably be just fine getting away with 105. Yeah, so th this has a little bit of a safety net built into it that we can drop that down if we need. Hmm. Yeah, I see that. Thanks, Liquidor. Okay, well, there it is. The Duquesne class battle cruiser. Slated to be uh, <laughs> just absurdly expensive, unfortunately. I was planning on giving the budget back in a really good shape, and I might have less of a good chance of doing that now. But I think we'll go ahead and build it. It's just too good of a ship design to let pass by, pass us by. So there it is, the Duquesne. Um, we will have to also retrofit the Devastation as soon as it becomes available, um, because we now have better quality guns for those as well. Okay, it couldn't have come at a better time. Increased industrialization, improves natural resources. That's going to have an impact on, excuse me, on the budget. So we can see 244 jumps up to 249, which is very good. So the Algere is now commissioned. Second Devastation. Devastation has finished her workup. And we expect both the other ships to be out in the next month. Just in time for us to retrofit the whole batch. And then hopefully the new retrofits won't have that same problem. Yeah, uh, so just going to mention to the stream real fast. Yes, Blinson, quality 0, 15. I'm... I eat, I'm eating crow over here for saying what I did. <laughs> I'm embarrassed, frankly. So what else do we need to do? I guess that's it. That's basically our, I haven't, no, I totally did not start a timer for this video, so I have no, no idea how long it's gone. So we'll probably have to speed things up. I'm imagining, I wanted to keep this below 35 minutes and I'm guessing we might run over that mark now. So what are we gonna leave XTRG with? Well, let's just speed forward for the last couple months. Oh, good, so more industrial production. This is, this is good news. We get a, a glimpse at the battle cruiser, the Kaiserin. Uh, it's just not gonna stack up in today's world. I'm, I'm afraid to say, Germany, that... Okay, and let's look at the Italians ones as well, the Puglia. Yep, nope, <laughs> I can't. We will have the queen of the seas in terms of battle cruisers, just the ultimate queen of the seas in battle cruisers for a long time. Okay, the affairs leak to the press. We always want to just increase tensions because tensions are really low and that has an impact on your budget. Plus, I like going to war. And, you know, XGRG will probably appreciate going to war. So we'll get all those things happening. We now have all of our... Wait, no, what? Come on, Nufrage. Please, good sir, please finish. That'll be the last one. I don't think we'll be getting more than one of these Duquesne classes out, but there's the new Forge. And we will saddle, unfortunately, XTRG with a bit of a negative penalty because the monthly balance of retrofitting all these will be a bit expensive. So it's my last act as <laughs> Naval Director is to get this up to so eight months at, f holy good God. Oh my good God. Heavens a Betsy. Good Lord, that is expensive. 
I could just leave a note, you know, like the president leaves a note for his successor in the office. Could leave a note saying good luck, and then also, by the way, um, <laughs> by the way, why does this drop down to four? Wait a second. Was this really at four? Oh, because it's overweight. That's right. So basically, they miscalculated the total here. So even though it was considered overweight, that the amount of weight remaining was still four. That's good to see. And maybe the new upgraded version won't have this weight remaining as low. I'm not sure, actually. So let's just go ahead and save it. I'm going to do it anyway. We will, we will rebuild. It's eight months, so let's kind of calculate this. This is only 16. We can do... I'm going to do all of them. I, I will apologize. But they'll, they'll be out very quickly. So it looks really bad. We just barely are going to squeak in under the funds. But it, as soon as they're finished in eight months, uh, he'll have a very positive budget. And it'll be... He'll be able to do whatever he wants with it. So by by very positive, I mean only about two million, but that's still something. Yeah, and I'll remind him he also has to upgrade the historical gamer class. Now I killed off uh, the historical gamer with a beam to the head. Um, it was the beam from an obsolete ship hitting him. It's supposed to be some kind of funny rhetorical metaphor or something like that. It'll be interesting to see how XTRG chooses to succeed me. <laughs> I'll be I'll be very curious to see that. Other than that, I let's just go ahead and do the last month. I don't think there's anything else we need to do. There's probably a lot of retrofits which I could have done in this last year, 1911, but I prefer to wait uh, closer to war when tensions are a little higher. Do my retrofits. Okay, we will demand. This is very a large amount of tension increase. Oh my gosh, they're close to mastering director firing. Wow, that's phenomenal. Okay, so that was a really great last month turn. So that's going to be it. We can save the game here. I can pass it on to XGRG. Um, I, I hope that he forgives me for, I forgot that this is not four months. Now I'm now remembering this is eight months, seven months left. So this is going to be a big problem for him. <laughs> but, okay. Uh, anyway, um, the quote from the chat on stream is the devastation, devastating the French national budget for years. And I, I've, oh yeah. Hmm. Unfortunately, it's probably a true comment. Okay. Well, uh, that's it. Good luck. XGRG. Let's do our quick summary. What has happened since, uh, 1900s? Well, the historical gamer started off. He designed a few ships. I guess we'll talk about his designs first. I don't know what order they were in. I'm sure I could sort by year and get that, but I think he got the Atouche Treville first. Um, this was a, a heavy armored cruiser. Really heavy belt. Like the kind of belt you'd see on battleships, dreadnoughts, etc. Uh, one, one of the problems with it, I'd say, is that it does have a very high maintenance. You can see that it's 300,000 compared to a maintenance of, well, I don't remember what the maintenance for the Devastation class is. Oh, we can actually see just by looking at the build ship. So the maintenance on these guys is 412,000. I mean, if you put these things in comparison like that, is or are four Latouche Trevilles worth three Devastations? I mean, clearly not, clearly not. It's just a very heavy in terms of maintenance uh, ship high costing so that but it, it was also the queen of the seas during the armored cruiser era and we took it successfully into battle several times and it was one of the reasons why um, we defeated Germany so yeah I mean just to give both sides of the coin both sides of the situation there he also designed the Sardinia which will be relevant why he designed this in a second. I've been mentioning a lot about this miracle ship, the Lavoisier, which was a legacy ship, actually has less tonnage, 5100 versus 55 for the Sardinia, and identical in every way, except for six inches conning tower versus uh, four inches conning tower, but in every other way identical. Um, same number of guns, although this pair of guns is actually moved here on the Lavoisier, and I, I would actually prefer those two mounted a little more forward 
I don't know if it has any difference in terms of um, firing arc. Maybe just they can engage a ship <laughs> slightly sooner, <laughs> but really, really, that's a extremely minor point. But it doesn't make sense to me why this one was heavier and stuff. It like the Vos the the Lavoisier was designed older, and yet it can do more than a newer ship that was built could do. So it's a, it's a miracle. So you got that Sardinia, which is, these are both fantastic light cruisers. So France is in good, really good hands with their old light cruisers. And that's the reason why I didn't build any light cruisers. The last thing he did was get these historical gamer class, like a semi-dreadnought out. It certainly is the best of the battleships that we've seen, like in the world, we can just say. Like going to the Almanac, we can see that um, battleships are now, they're becoming obsolete. But if we had to stack these all up against each other, even though, for example, Germany has more and a to higher total tonnage, I would fancy our chances against theirs just because of the historical gamer class. I don't think we could take on all of the British ships. There's just too many. They almost have us two to one. But we would give them a very good fight. So we have basically all that we have left are 16 very high quality battleships. Now what will become of them is yet to be seen. We don't know if people will use them for a strategic effect or scrap them in favor of more dreadnoughts and battlecruisers. It'll be interesting. We'll all be waiting to find out. Okay, so I'll get into the whole world picture more later, but the historical gamer in his war, he went to war with Italy and he was able to wrest Sardinia from Italian control. It's now a French colony, which is fantastic. Now, in my tenure, the only thing I really did was create this devastation class. Um, I, I, get, I guess I also got the diamond class out. I really like the minesweepers for their minesweeping, minesweeping capability. They're very low budget, sorry, maintenance, but also the fact that they have this armor, which makes them able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the destroyer which is kind of remarkable for a ship that it's about one third the displacement of these destroyers and less than half of the maintenance cost. But because of that little trick, which is maybe a game bug, but something I've been, if it is a bug, exploiting for a long time, is uh, the fact that they can get armor. It's remarkable. Then the devastation class, which is really is having an impact trying to do these retrofits. It will be uh, like, I wouldn't say the undisputed Queen of the Seas because now we have the Duquesne out, which is almost in every way better. It's faster. It has um, superimposed guns. Let's just compare the armor, nine and a half and 11 and a half. So it has a half inch more armor everywhere, but it's actually funny. It's exactly a half inch more everywhere, but the Duquesne actually has better deck armor. And that's probably going to be the more relevant turn, uh, point. So yeah, the Duquesne is just a better ship. And she should be for her 34,000 tons. Whereas the Devastation is only 29,000. But it'll be a good fighting ship. I'm, the Devastation will hold up well until the end of the series, I'm sure. In my conflict, I went to war with Germany. And we were able to wrest control of good... I can never remember. It was Tanganyika, and I think... Southwest Africa, but it might have been one other colony. I can I cannot remember, and I didn't do my due diligence by checking first, so shame on me. Uh, but we took two or three colonies from the Germans. It wasn't like uh, so the colonies I took were about the same point value as Sardinia, so it wasn't like I won a a better war than the historical gamer. We both won good wars. <clears throat> In fact, I had was fighting the issue of being blockaded the entire time. Um, and that left us in a, it was kind of a poor situation where even though um, in terms of the war, so the French, the French sunk ships you see here were all sunk in the Italian war, except for this one destroyer, the Repairier. So you can see not many French ships have been sunk at all, just two Sfax classes and five destroyers. So four of those, no, six destroyers. So five of those were sunk against the Italians who lost an armored cruiser, a light cruiser, two armed merchant cruisers, and uh five destroyers <clears throat> but for the cost of only one destroyer the germans lost a dreadnought a battleship two armed cruise armored cruisers 
five light cruisers, an armored merchant, you know, basically this is the, the merchant ships in disguise. I mean, the armed merchant ships in disguise is just a, a normal merchant ship. Uh, I think like the Penguin, the German Penguin from World War II. Uh, and then they also lost, it looks like, seven destroyers. So in terms of like tonnage lost or whatever, we decimated the Germans in our war. But because they were blockading us every turn, it was another 240 victory points. And it also put a lot of pressure, a lot of unrest in, um, into our population. So, uh, yes, the chat uh, stream has corrected me that it is just the Tanganyika and Southwest Africa that we were able to wrest from the Germans. So those two colonies. Thank you. So that's it. I mean, that's basically the summary of what has happened. And now let's just look a little bit into the future. Um, in terms of total budget, now things will be a little bit skewed based on the tension. So the Americans will have a lower budget than they should have because tensions modify the budget. I don't know exactly how, but higher tension means higher budget. For us, that's just an average across all the tensions, I believe. I'm not sure about that, but that's my guess. But for each one of these, you can actually see their budget increase or decrease based on our individual tension with them. Nonetheless, how it stands is the British are in first with 373, Americans with 363, then the Germans with 315. So even though we took them out and took away two of their colonies, it didn't have much of an impact. We haven't closed the gap that much. Then it's us in France in fourth. Then we have Italy, Japan, and then last, Austria-Hungary. In terms of dreadnoughts, we're a little bit behind the curve. I mean, you can consider our four dreadnoughts built, but now they're just retrofitting. Still, uh, we are a little bit behind in this category. You can see that even our 116, if it was to be considered totally built, would be a little bit behind... Okay, so actually it would be ahead of Germany... And I would say anyways, the Devastation class is far superior to what we've seen out of the other um, designs. We'll go into the exact designs in a moment. In fact, actually, let's just do that now. Let's start taking a look at all these different ships. So the Westphalen what is the only... No, this is ship sunk. Let's go into ships. We have this old Rhineland class, six 12-inch guns. Pretty much obsolete. And this is the Westphalen, which is a pretty good design. Very strong armor as is fitting with the Germans. And then a 10, 12 inch guns, so you get an eight, 12 inch broadside. It's a little bit strange that they have such a large jump, large disparity between their primary and secondary from 12 inch, inch bleh, from 12 inches down to three. That is a little bit strange to me, but otherwise it's a decent dreadnought, 21,000 tons. I wanna jump over to the British real fast because I, I do know that they have a very similar design. So this is 23,000 tons and basically it's identical except for lower armor, and they're using 13-inch guns. Also, was that possibly a knot slower? 19 knots versus the Germans at 20. Of these two, I'm not sure. I might even favor the German design because... And, and by the way, just as a side note, it is, it is really cool that the Germans, historically, they did focus more on armor. Um, and the British focused more on armament. I mean, I don't know if that was like their national focus, but that's just their specialties panned out that way or something. So it is kind of cool that the trend here these nations are following is true to history. Let's take a look at the Von der Tann. Eight 12-inch guns in cross-deck fire configuration. 24 knots, extremely slow for a battle cruiser, and decent armor. 23,000 tons. Okay, let's move on to the British, since we'll just do those. The two most relevant foes for us are the Germans and the Brits, and then we'll get through the rest of them next. But very briefly, though. The Irresistible class? Yeah, this is the same one. So let's move on to the Prince of Wales now. This is their newest one. So it looks like they have... Oh, this is very strange. They have that reverse... That very strange gun that fires backwards from the front. <laughs> I hate that one. I think it's so ugly. You'd almost miss it, but I saw that it had to have an 8-inch broadside. I mean, an 8-gun broadside. One, two, three. And there's the fourth one. So, yeah, very strange uh, configuration. I have no idea how this, how this design functions. I have absolutely no idea. So, I'm, uh, I'm not even going to comment. My initial impression is very negative of this design, but um, we won't know until we see it in action. Okay, so... And then the British... 
last British Dreadnought. This is a much more solid design. Dual triple turrets, fore and aft, and then they have this middle area. So they actually get off a 10, 13 inch broadside, which is pretty good. It is 26,000 tons though, so it's almost at the 29,000 tons of my Devastation class, and mine's gonna be firing uh, 10, 15 inch guns. And this only has a 10, 13 inch gun broadside. So this is the reason why, if you can, I think going with four centerline turrets is better. I think with the extra weight, you can put it towards anything. Now they will have slightly higher armor and one knot more on me, but they don't have much in the terms of secondary guns and we were able to get uh, a whole slew of six inch guns. Okay, the Indomitable class as well. This is a very strange, okay, so high caliber guns, but only three of them. 26 knots, that's what we put our Duquesne class at. That's what I feel like is the normal for early battle cruisers. And they also have this five inch and then a three inch. I, I always think that's a little bit strange, but uh, it will be good at gunning down destroyers. So to me, a five inch gun is like the ideal destroyer killer already though, because if it hits them, that's gonna do a lot of damage and it's gonna fire slightly faster than the six inch guns. Um, we also can see one of the New Zealand class, which is still a six I, I don't understand the advantage of this versus their older centerline configuration. It is a little strange. Now, I mean, I know that this, the these turrets, I think, have a greater firing arc than if they're dead center. But it probably is not worth the massive. I mean, look at this six-inch belt. Oh my gosh, six-inch belt. That's it just it, and twenty-four knots. This is extremely slow for a battle cruiser. Yeah. Well, that's my impression of it. 16 four, four inch guns as well. So it's, it's just very strange the disparity between their primary and secondary. All right, so now let's just kind of blow through the other designs because we don't want to spend too much time on this, but just to see. 12, so this has a, a 10, 12 inch gun broadside, 26,000 tons, very fast for a dreadnought. We have the battle cruiser they're using, cross deck, very similar to the German cross deck fire configuration. Um, 25 knots, so that's more reasonable. They also have this Varlberg. Wow, look at that. A lot of rear-facing turrets. Maybe the Austro-Hungarians fancy themselves doing a lot of running away. Very low armor as well, seven and a half inches. And these are only 12 inch guns. I mean, I like the triple configuration fore and aft. I kind of started doing that myself, but yeah. Okay, so let's go to the Italians. The Giulio Cesare, or Giulio Cesare. Uh, this is their older design, 20,000 tons, 20, very fast, but just six 13 inch guns per side. We have the Lepanto, 26 knots, again, very, just the same thing. Basically, they cut off all the armor and made it 26 knots. <laughs> so they're almost the same ship. We have the Japanese, Katori class, 20 knot. This is a very reasonable design for the Japanese. I actually really like this design from them. Um, it fits their needs, which is just not too heavy. 14 3 inch guns, I, I would disagree with that, but 10 inch belt, very reasonable. Middle ground, they're taking like the very safe middle ground with, uh, with this design, which is probably appropriate for them. Then they have this battle cruiser, very light, 19,600 tons, very light. Oh, only 11 inch guns, that explains it. Yeah, this is almost weak enough that an armored cruiser could take it on. I mean, if you think about our Latouche Treville, it has eight inch belt and, okay, one of my complaints about it was it had such low eight inch guns. If those were nine or maybe even 10, it would be really a match for this. You'd, you'd give the, a huge advantage to the battle cruiser, but, but it's possible the armor cruiser would defeat it. And that's, the, you never want to hear that if you're a battle cruiser, that's their whole role is anti-armored cruiser. Hey, they also have, we can't, can't see the Kurama class quite yet. And now, lastly, the Americans. They have the Oregon class, six, three, 13 inch guns, 11 and a half, very heavily armored, 21 knots, good speed. You have the Indiana class, which has, oh, this is interesting. Superimposed rear, which is good. Otherwise, it's an eight, 13 inch broadside. A little bit low on the armor and a little bit low on the speed. But that's probably how they get away with only having a 22,000 ton dreadnought with all the, all the other trimmings it has. 
And uh, I really don't like this. I guess this is a battle cruiser that also fancies itself doing a lot of running away. Um, dual superimposed rear turrets, but only one forward gun. I, I, yeah. So if this is trying to chase anything, it won't be firing very much. You could even see like, well, any other ship that has the same. I mean, if the ranger was chasing after another ranger, the one that was running away would win. <laughs> so. Yeah, and then they have, a, actually, they waste a lot of space, it seems like, on the secondary guns, considering they don't have that many primary guns. And actually went up for 10 inches of belts. That's a little weird, too. I don't like it. And that is it. That's the state of affairs in the world uh, right now, the ships that we're up against. What uh, I would say is, obviously, the French need to increase their battle cruisers, which is what I tried to do at the very end there, but I decided to go with a very expensive one instead of one that we can kind of mass produce. We just need a battle cruiser to hold down the home seas for a while. And the armored cruisers, I think, are good enough that they can hold themselves, they can hold their own in the, the foreign stations. So that, I think that does it for our review. The uh, stream will let me know if I've missed anything. But I think that's it. So now we can just pass it over to XRG. Like I said, it'll be interesting to see how he kills me off, how I die. And even more so, it'll be interesting to see what what course he takes. I've already learned a lot just by seeing the difference between the historical gamer and myself. Um, I've learned a lot. You know, there's th things that you call into question that you're like, oh, that would never work. But then you see it actually attempted and it's like, oh, you know what? That's not so bad. So it's good. It's very refreshing. And also it gives a nice fresh feel to the, to the, to the rule of waves, the game itself, doing a succession series. So I highly recommend it to anybody who's playing the game out there who, um, yeah, it's really not that hard to just ask if anybody wants to do a, su a succession series and then trying to play along. So um, I guess that's it for me then. We're going to call this video to a close, and your next episode will be with XTRG. And that's it. Without further ado, thanks for watching, and until whatever video you watch of mine next, <laughs> take care.